Hi, uh, good morning everybody and uh, welcome to the Wi-Fi Knowledge Summit. And thank you to the organizers uh, for inviting us, uh, you know, the Wi-Fi Alliance. I don't know how much about, of you, you know, know about the Wi-Fi Alliance, but uh, we are an international industry and trade organization uh, which was formed more than uh, 22 years back. And uh, basically, you know, a group of six companies got together to see that the various diverse, you know, upcoming Wi-Fi products, which were there in a very unstructured manner, you know, how could they, you know, work together in terms of interoperability, in terms of security, in terms of backward compatibility, and in terms of reliability, etc. And that was the main reason why the Wi-Fi Alliance was formed. And in fact, the term Wi-Fi was formed by this organization. Wireless fidelity was coined and termed by this organization called the Wi-Fi Alliance. Yeah. Of course, the Wi-Fi Alliance has come a long way from now. And uh, we have uh, more than 900 members you know, who are part of our ecosystem. We have more than close to 1,000 you know, live members today in the Wi-Fi Alliance. And they're doing a great amount of work. A lot of work is happening in the Wi-Fi areas, different areas of Wi-Fi, which I will talk about. Uh, so today's objective, you know, I'm not a technical person. I'll be very honest with you up front and say that. I'm a sales and business development person, and I just joined the Wi-Fi Alliance about five months back here. Yeah. So uh, in case you ask me some very technical questions, I may not be able to answer them, but I'll take it back, or I'll request a friend, Dr. Shri Khan, to probably try and answer that here. Yeah. But uh, my objective today was to come and give you a little bit of, you know, a sense of the kind of work which is happening and an update on, you know, for Wi-Fi technology for 2022. So that was the main objective. And, you know, rather than making it into a very technical presentation, this is more of a knowledge-based presentation where you know, okay, this is the kind of work which is happening in Wi-Fi. And like I mentioned just a little while earlier, unfortunately, though Wi-Fi is ubiquitous across the globe, and, you know, we have more than and the economic value of Wi-Fi today is at about $3.3 trillion and with about 4.4 billion Wi-Fi devices to be shipped this year, an accumulative of 39 billion Wi-Fi devices have been shipped already. So with all that happening, you know, India is still very, very way behind in the Wi-Fi pickup here. Yeah. And, you know, whenever I speak to my friends from the telecom operators, whether it is, you know, Airtel or Geo or anybody, you know, I always tell them that you guys are the main culprit because unlike the rest of the world, you know, even in parts of Asia Pacific or even in Europe or in the Americas, the Indian operators never focused on Wi-Fi. You know, they never went ahead, you know, with the, you know, the Wi-Fi deployment even for, you know, offloading or whatever it is, you know. Uh, it is only now that they're talking to some level about, you know, their interest in Wi-Fi. And, uh, and in that respect, probably I would give more kudos to our government uh, telco BSNL, you know, who has still gone ahead and deployed, you know, close to some 30, 40,000 Wi-Fi hotspots. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Railtel having deployed about close to 10,000 Wi-Fi hotspots. Yeah. So if you look at from the operator perspective, these are the two main players uh, who have done that, yeah, so. Uh, anyway, our, our vision, the connecting everyone and everywhere, everything and the principles with drivers, I won't take too much of time on that. Just to give you a snapshot of the kind of organizations who are our members, I mean, we have have the who's the who's of the global world who are our members and uh, our sponsor companies or the board of directors of the Wi-Fi Alliance comprises of organizations uh, like Apple, uh, Samsung, Huawei, Cisco, Comcast, Dell, Texas Instruments, NXP Semiconductors, Qualcomm, and Intel. So these are uh, Broadcom. So these are the uh, sponsor companies of Wi-Fi Alliance. That means they are the, on the board of directors of Wi-Fi Alliance and they pay close to $100,000 to the Wi-Fi Alliance to be members of the Wi-Fi Alliance. Yeah. Uh, from India, we do have members like Capgemini, which is Global Edge, which has become Capgemini. Uh, we have a small company called Sky Electronics, which is Pantom. Alethea is a member, and uh, VVDN is a member. 
Uh, we have C dot and TCS who's just applied for the membership. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see more uptick happening from the Indian environment also here. Yeah. So what does the Wi-Fi Alliance membership you know, allow you to do? I just you know, want to put this slide into perspective before I just talk about you know, what is the kind of work which we're doing. So basically, our members are the people who are involved in driving the devolution, uh, the uh, development and evolution of the Wi-Fi technologies, the next level of Wi-Fi technologies, and making sure that there is backward compatibility with the older technologies here. So today, a lot of work is happening around Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6C. And though I know there are people who are going to be talking more about that, and Shrikanth has already covered that, but I will also talk a little bit more about that. And of course, one of the key functions and one of the key work within the Wi-Fi Alliance is the uh, uh, certify business, of which we do. Uh, so, you know, the certification to make sure that all the Wi-Fi products are, uh, you know, they are interoperable with the other products. They have a backward compatibility with the, all the other existing products. Security is up to date, whether it's from the WPA2 or WPA3 perspective, and the reliability factor is there. So we have 13 test labs, authorized test labs across the globe, where people can go in to test their uh, products. And of course, we also have now a new certification program where people can do their testing in their own company labs or in their own company sites called the Quick Track certification, which I'll talk about a little bit more. But in India, we have Wipro, who is our authorized test lab, and uh, so that's the, yeah. Uh, just to be clear, one more thing I wanted to just talk over here, sorry. We also do a lot of work with the government. We work with the regulatory bodies to promote you know, spectrum harmonization and things like that. And today, a lot of our work is focused around opening up of the 6 gigahertz spectrum for Wi-Fi 6 here. Already more than 60 countries across the globe have opened up the 6 gigahertz spectrum for Wi-Fi 6. And we've been interacting with TRI and the Department of Telecom and requesting them to open up the 6 gigahertz in India also, which hopefully they've taken it in the positive way. And we should see some momentum happening maybe by the end of this year or beginning of 2023 year. Uh, so, that's, so that's one of the things which also with the Wi-Fi Alliance does there. Yeah. So I'm, like I mentioned, the certification is the foundation of Wi-Fi Alliance. And uh, we have uh, more than 30 plus program, 30 different kind of certifications available. And we have done more than 72,000 certifications in the globe so far. And uh, I wanted to talk about this new certification program, you know, which is basically called the quick track, because earlier, if you're building up a product from ground level upwards, you had to go to our authorized test labs and you know, get the product certified from there. And it could take a much longer time you know, also to happen. It can take anything between you know, a few weeks to you know, one or two months also for the certification to happen. So the middle of last year, we introduced the quick track testing and certification, which is basically focused on and based upon already qualified solutions of Wi-Fi certified products. So we have certain chipset vendors, module vendors, who are our authorized solution providers. And based upon their certified solution programs, you know, if you are, want to certify your new Wi-Fi product, which has some changes and you want to make some targeted changes in the functionality of that Wi-Fi product, you can do the certification within one or two weeks itself, either through our authorized test lab, and in some of the organization where you have the facility in-house, you can do your in-house testing also and do that, yeah. So basically that makes, you know, solution providers become quick track ready by providing qualified solutions, and it enables a faster time to market, reducing the testing and certification cost, and, you know, pr promotes the customer's lifetime product quality, yeah. And of course, it makes sure that you know, the product developers can streamline the certification process and come to the market much faster. Yeah. I won't take too much of time on this, but I just wanted you know, the folks over here, if anyone is interested, or if anyone is planning you know, to, uh, to join the Wi-Fi Alliance, that we have this new certification program, which you can use now and do in-house testing or work with our authorized test lab. Yeah. So 
we have more than 30 certification programs or 30 plus task groups which are working on the different technology aspects of the Wi-Fi. And, uh, you know, a lot of them Shrikant covered in his overview, and I'm glad that he did that. But, uh, you know, right from, you know, from the uh, uh, connectivity perspective, so whether it is Wi-Fi certified 6 or Wi-Fi certified N or AC or gig, which is on the 60 gigahertz millimeter wave technology, you know, Wi-Fi direct, which is more applicable for location-based and aware services and Wi-Fi Halo, which is for sub gigahertz, one gigahertz IoT applications. And then, of course, on the, you know, optimization, which we talked about, you know, Wi-Fi certified optimized connectivity or, you know, uh, Wi-Fi certified data elements, you know, which allows for uh, how does the whole Wi-Fi network as such and not just, you know, the AP or the station, you know, to be optimized for the best performance optimization here. Yeah. And that's what I just answered also, you know, when one of the gentlemen over here, you know, asked questions about, is the network also getting optimized here? Yeah. I mean, are we working towards that? So yes, we do have a lot of programs related to that, but how much are they being used? To be very honest, still not as much as much we would like to be used. There is a lot of work happening on this area. A lot of our member companies, a lot of technology companies, software companies, operators are involved in the development of, you know, the optimization perspective. <clears throat> but the adoption is still low, like Shrikan mentioned. And of course, you know, we are working on, uh, you know, application side, Miracast, which is the display optimization for any kind of display or, you know, from focusing, you know, from your PC to your projector and things like that. And uh, we do a lot of work on coexistence. So we work very closely with organizations like 3GPP and NGMN to make sure that Wi-Fi and 5G can coexist and co, you know, in the same spectrum or in different spectrums. And always the question like, you know, which you can't also mention that, you know, is Wi-Fi 5, well, it was will Wi-Fi 4 replace Wi-Fi, but we saw that after Wi-Fi, but 4G came in, will 4G replace Wi-Fi? Uh, you know, after 4G came in, we saw more and more shipments of Wi-Fi happening. And now the same thing question is being asked that, you know, with the Wi-Fi, uh, with 5G coming in, will it replace Wi-Fi? The answer to that is that, I, you know, I just gave you that, you know, we are go going to have more than 4.4 billion Wi-Fi devices being shipped this year. So the answer is no, it cannot replace. They're going to be complementary technologies and they will remain complementary technologies always. The only good thing is that, uh, you know, where I'm a little at variance with Shrikant is that, uh, you know, in a way, the Wi-Fi is also doing a lot of things which the cellular technology is doing, especially with Wi-Fi 6 and with, wi and with the upcoming Wi-Fi 7, with faster speeds and very, very low latency levels. In fact, in my previous organization, which was the Wireless Broadband Alliance, WBA, I come from the WBA, we did actual Wi-Fi testing in industrial IoT sites, Metis Aerospace in, in UK for the Wi-Fi 6. And we achieved the same results as we achieved with, you know, with the 5G test bed there. Yeah. So the same kind of latency levels, the same kind of transaction, the same kind of information flow with Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E was achieved, which was as good, if not better, than the cellular technology. Yeah. So, so that's what the objective is that you know, and especially with Wi-Fi 7 uh, slated to be there two years down the line, not now. So please don't think it's going to come now. Wi-Fi 7 is still, you know, 18 to 24 months, even for the first product to even come out. And we are still in the process of working on the certification program, yeah. What happened? Okay. Uh, page up, right? Or, or page down? Uh, sorry, page down, page down. So, you know, I just wanted to pick up, you know, a few, uh, you know, technologies, you know, which we're working on. So, Shrikan mentioned about Wi-Fi Aware. So, Wi-Fi Aware is the proximity-based, you know, Wi-Fi program, which basically, you know, if you're in a, any kind of environment, you're working in a retail store or you're working in the hospital or wherever, and it allows, you know, you to recognize your peers and, you know, allows you to connect to the nearby applications and services, you know, with a very, very efficient power 
applications, you know, and it supports native and IP-based data uh, exchange and is optimized to work in crowded environments here. Yeah. So a lot of proximity-based services, uh, you know, retail analytics services, pushing advertisements and things like that, and, you know, networking and gaming and all these applications can happen through the Wi-Fi away area. If anybody is more interested to know more about these technologies, uh, my presentation will be uh, available and there are links over here and you can tap on the link and you can, you'll be taken to the site where you'll have more detailed knowledge and more detailed write-up about these technologies. Yeah. Uh, similarly with Wi-Fi certified location, uh, th this is a more mature technology and a lot of work has been happening and there are dedicated organizations in the globe, including there is a new Israeli company called Diuk, which is working a lot you know, on the Wi-Fi location perspective and making sure that, you know, Wi-Fi location on the, you know, can allows you to pinpoint even up to the indoor level, right, like the RFID perspective or Bluetooth combination, you know, Wi-Fi can replace that with a better optimization and with a better scalability and, you know, whether, on, on, whether it is an industry IoT perspective or whether it is in the hospital environment or whether it is in the retail environment, you know, you'll be able to, you know, pinpoint where the nearby products are placed and, you know, how you can work and optimize your business and services based upon that, yeah. And uh, so it brings the standard-based location determination with multi-vendor interoperability to Wi-Fi devices and uh, reduces the burden of supporting multiple proprietary location technologies because Wi-Fi is unlicensed, it's not proprietary, it's open, it's open technology. Yeah. And it improves the user, uh, you know, uh, experience with existing location-based technology. So it complements with existing Bluetooth and RFID-based, and you can set up an entire location-based uh, network working along with the RFID and Bluetooth-based technology. Yeah. Uh, of course, we're doing a lot of work on the QoS management, and uh, that is very important because as we are today, you know, working on the Wi-Fi 6 and a lot of work is happening on the Wi-Fi 6 side and we are slated to move towards Wi-Fi 7. It's very important that the quality of service, you know, with the technology enhancement, the quality of service on the Wi-Fi deployment is also taken care of, yeah. So that is something in which a lot of the members and there is a big task group within the Wi-Fi Alliance which is working on the QoS side, yeah. And uh, again, you know, it's available on my, on, on our site, please go through it. I'll not, you know, but, uh, you know, I just talk a little bit about it. Basically, the objective of the work which is happening in the Wi-Fi QoS management side is to deliver consistent end-to-end -end QoS treatment for all your advanced use cases here. Yeah. And basically it is for applications or whether it is for a network or whether it is for the APs or for the stations. Everything is covered over there in traffic management and working in tandem, you know, with the cellular technology. So if you have deployments, which are mixed deployments with 5G and Wi-Fi, you know, it makes sure that the QS is applied basically for that also. And whether it is a resident environment or an enterprise environment or an industrial IoT environment or you know, whether it is uh, Wi-Fi sensing in the home environment or the home IoT environment, this is applicable for all those applications. Yeah. So you can also, you know, apply, uh, you know, uh, DCP mappings. That means basically you can schedule, you know, that uh, video and data will get more preference over voice and all those things, you know, can be, you know, scheduled, you know, in, in, for, as far as the uh, QoS work which is happening over there. And already applications are working over there where if you take, you know, APs from Ruckers or from HP or from Cisco, you can actually do those applications yeah, and allow the QoS treatment, treatment across both Wi-Fi and the wired networks, you know, and set your schedules over there. Yeah. So... <clears throat> I'll just take a little bit of time, you know, regarding Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6C because I do know that Shurikan mentioned, you know, that, uh, you know, that not too much of, you know, is there too much of difference between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 5? Uh, we would probably say, yes, there is a considerable difference. And uh, now the Wi-Fi 6 release 2 has been come out from the Wi-Fi Alliance perspective and including the certification programs for the Wi-Fi 6 APs and the Wi-Fi 6 E APs there. Yeah. So today, more than 350 million Wi-Fi 60 products have been shipped, and more than 
2 billion Wi-Fi 6 products, devices have been shipped here. So 2.2 billion Wi-Fi 6 and more than 350 million Wi-Fi 6C products have been shipped in the globe today. So that's a testimony itself to the popularity of Wi-Fi 6 because it's not that Wi-Fi 5 is not available. <coughs> 11.02, 11.AC is still available, even 11.N is available, but on the IoT perspective, especially on the industrial IoT and home IoT perspective, we are seeing people are going more for the Wi-Fi 6 and the Wi-Fi 6 e-deployment because of the coverage and the low latency and things and other benefits which are applicable because of that. Yeah. So yes, it's happening, but uh, uh, we hope, like Shrikan mentioned, that it will become even more <coughs> mature and the technologies which are there, they will actually you know, deliver more than you know, what they have actually verbally promised. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, last, uh, I'm through almost. So just last slide quickly about Wi-Fi 7 because a lot of questions come about Wi-Fi 7. So like I mentioned that today it's all about Wi-Fi 6. So I don't think we should be thinking too much about Wi-Fi 7, though yes, already a lot of work is happening between IEEE and the Wi-Fi Alliance. All, uh, we have a task group, you know, both from the marketing perspective and the technical perspective working on the Wi-Fi 7, but it's still 18 to 24 months away before we can even come out with some kind of a certification program you know, on, on, on the Wi-Fi 7. Though some of the analysts are predicting that you know, in 2024, 2% 2 to 3% of all the Wi-Fi shipments will comprise of Wi-Fi 7. So Wi-Fi 7 will give you 30 gigabits of speeds with even much lesser latency, which will almost be like the cellular technology. You know, and which will always be like, you know, like the 5G latency levels. And you'll be able to do a lot more applications, especially on the VX, AR, and VR world, yeah, and the video world, yeah. So augmented reality, virtual reality, and uh, immersive 3D, and, uh, you know, all those kind of things, you know, that is where the main application of Wi-Fi 7 will happen, yeah. So that's it, and that was my uh, last slide, and... Uh, if uh, I would invite everybody to be, you know, become members of Wi-Fi Alliance and help in the development of, you know, the Wi-Fi. Yeah, thank you so much. Hey, Paramji, good morning. So, Ponmudi Ramachandran from Max Linear. So, Wi-Fi Alliance ensures that uh, we have a good interoperability when we buy devices from the market. Uh, so, yes. that is one of the key objectives. Like, uh, like uh, when somebody goes for certification and then goes commercial, do you take samples from the market and then ensures that? Yeah. So, there is a, there is a, there is a. There is a great amount of testing which happens depending upon what is the kind of product you're certifying. Because we, we have three levels of certification. So if it's a new product you know, built from ground level, you need to work with our authorized test labs. And I have Sobhagya here from our Wipro test lab who's here. And she'll be able to answer you that you know, what is the amount of extensive testing you know, which goes on to make sure that your product can interoperate with the other products out in the market, and they are backward compatible with the other products in the market. Security is up to date, and the reliability factor, and all those testing, there are a huge you know, amount of testing which happens, which can even run to some hundred, or more than 100 plus tests which take place here. Yeah. And there are simpler forms of uh, uh, the certification programs for products which are based upon already Wi-Fi certified products. Yeah. So th that is uh, a different level of certification. Uh, Paramjit uh, Rohit here from Sophos. Uh, first feedback uh, on your uh, starting of the presentation on the numbers of uh, access points or the hotspots. Being XGO, I can say uh, the numbers are quite high. Uh, it, it's like uh, 2.500k hotspots already running. No, no, no. no. no, no, no. So then in just, terms just, of just hot, hotspots, uh, yeah. they are about uh, close to about 500 million Wi-Fi uh, hotspots uh, across no, the globe. I, I'm That's not all. contradicting your yeah, number. Yeah, 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 uh, we yeah, can yeah, discuss yeah. it later. Uh, in so India, they're very low. In India, yeah, in India, I we only still... actually have not even people talk about a one lakh hotspots, but no, I no. find that also a ridiculous number, honestly no, speaking. No, no. So uh, let me give you some numbers. Uh, 2.500k uh, hotspots and uh, offload off uh, 80k plus. That's when I moved out. We were no, these are not my numbers. No, no, these I, are numbers from IDC and Wi-Fi Alliance. No, no, no. Yeah. So, so, so I, I will know. not quote wrong numbers. <laughs> if I do that, I'll be sacked from my job. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. now the second. Be rest assured uh, of that. Yeah. Okay. The next question. Is, uh, uh, I think they need to uh, work with Ajad to uh, work on the numbers. 
Uh, second thing is, why should we have two large uh, associations like WBA, Wi-Fi, and uh, a person who want, a company who wants to go ahead will spend around 38k per annum membership? Why we are not thinking about a single body across world, just like GSMA, who can help us in the industry also, operators also, everybody? So, what is the need of two different organizations, 38k? Yeah, I'll answer load. that question. Yeah. yeah. So GSMA is a body which is made up of all the operators in the globe here. Yeah. So all the operators in the globe, but they don't do any work on these technologies. And they are very, very focused on licensed technologies. They're not interested in Wi-Fi. In fact, we have to go to them and talk to them about Wi-Fi and the coexistence between 4G and 5G and Wi-Fi. So GSMA is, I would just leave them out here. As far as the second organization, Wireless Broadband Alliance, where I come from, they have about 140 members. And they focus more, again, on the operator roaming side. So the WB open roaming, you've heard about that term. So they, they, they don't work on these technologies, which the Wi-Fi Alliance does. Wi-Fi Alliance has 1,000 members compared to 140 of WBA. Why is that? Because all the development work, certification work is happening on the Wi-Fi Alliance. And we are the body who term the coin Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi 4, Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6, all these terminologies, WPA 2, WPA 3, have emanated from our organization. So if there was no Wi-Fi alliance, you wouldn't have these technologies available. So the reason is that you can't have one organization because the work with WBA is doing is more operator-based and more on the roaming side and more on actually you know, making sure and testing the work which the Wi-Fi Alliance does. So like I mentioned that you know, when I was in the WBA, we did a complete testing of Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E APs in Metis Aerospace for the industrial IoT 4.0 application there. Yeah. But do, does the WBA work on those technologies? No, they don't. They don't do the development work, they don't do the certification program, which is done by the Wi-Fi Alliance. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is the way it is. Thanks, thanks, Param. Thank you so much. Yeah, sorry, in the interest thank, of thank time, you. we'll... Thank, uh, you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.